Hello and welcome to this video diary in which I am looking at my finicky N-Gage model railway layout. Um, this whole channel is going to be dedicated to this project and I'm hoping over the next or coming months, maybe year or two, um, it's going to form a visual diary of how this project comes along and I'm hoping that most of the videos are going to be in the style of a, a how-to, so showing how I went about things. Um, it'll have my successes, it'll have my failures, of which there will probably be many um, and hopefully that will help some of you that are, are new to the hobby. Um, I'm coming back to it after a number of years, so I'm not saying that I've got all of the answers, but uh, we'll see how things go. Now, one of the first things I did was to decide where my layout was going to go, and I'm going to do a video on the baseboard and the reasons why it's where it is later. That'll probably be the second video. In this first one, I just want to have a look at the software that I used for modeling the track. Um, so basically, the first thing I did is decided where my layout was going to go downloaded this uh, trial copy of AnyRail 5 and dived in and started to create some track plans. And you can see here that I've got quite a few that I've done. And the beautiful thing about this way of designing things is you can change things. For instance, I started off, it's not saved that one. I started off with a track plan that had sort of multiple sidings. Uh, this isn't actually the first one because the first one in the loft had an area that went right the way around. But I had um, some sidings off to the side here. And uh, this is the main part where I'm gonna model the layout. And excuse me for scrolling up and down. I've got this uh, video side for YouTube. Um, if I then have a look at uh, the new out phase one thin, you'll see that things have changed quite a bit here. Um, I've reduced the number of uh, sidings in the fiddle yard and um, I then had to sort of rework this area as well. And when I printed this out and laid it out on the baseboard, I found that the modeled area was beginning to look a little bit fussy. There was too much going on. So what I did is I did a save as, and then I went back and created a, yet another one. And this is my final uh, layout at the moment where I've still got my four sidings in, in the fiddle yard, um, but I've moved everything over slightly, which gives me a, a longer run into uh, into the countryside. And I've lost one of the branches up here as well. So it became a lot more simple, saved me a little bit of money. Um, but being able to print this out and work with it quickly on the screen and moving things around was, was absolutely brilliant. So uh, the other thing that I did as well, just while we're in here, is uh, if I open up, the uh, panel, that one there. I use the software as well to create myself a panel where I'm gonna have my my lights showing where things go. Now this is the, the same sort of track plan, but I've just stretched it out so that it uh, is lengthways, turned off the endpoints and connections and everything that I'll go through in a moment. And then I can print that out and mount that hopefully, if all goes well in a few weeks time, you'll actually see this with uh, LEDs or switches, whatever I decide to do. Um, and that was quite a nice way of drawing that out because I found using little strips of black paper and drawing lines it was starting to look a little bit messy uh, and printing that was was the best way to go for me so let's just have a look at some of the menus I'm not going to go through this in great detail on the file we can create a new project if you've got a project that you then want to modify save as um, so I have finicky and I change that to finicky 2 um, so that I always had something to go back to. Um, in the software world, we call them deltas, but you know, you've got an older one that you can go back to if you mess something up. You can obviously open old ones. Info. Info is great because you can get a list of materials. It gives you all of the track, because I've only got track on, on that I'm working with, all of the track that you need, all the points that you need, or turnouts uh, for your layout. You can print that off, take that to your model shop. It gives you a list of items that you need to buy. List of sections, if you're working with sections, I'm not. Your recent designs, you can print it, you can export it as a picture, as a 3D file, or as a train player export file. I haven't done any of those. Um, and there are a number of options. So center your work area, small track icons. You've got different libraries that you can turn on and off. I just working in N. So I said, just give me all of the ends, um, which was uh, okay for me. Your colors, you can change your colors if you want to. I just start with the default colors. And then you've got user objects. If you've got libraries of your own objects that you want to upload, then you can do that as well well 
So quite a few uh, options off of the file menu and then obviously exit out. I'm going to go new and we'll just set up a new uh, project. We've only got a, a number of buttons here and I'm going to jump straight to the end one, the settings one. Uh, first of all, we need to decide the measurement system that we're going to be working in. So I'm going to be working in millimeters. Set the width and the depth of your overall area that's available to you. Uh, you can then turn the grid off or on. I tend to work with the grid and I set my grid to around about a foot, but you can set it to whatever you want to. And then endpoints and connections and control points, those are turned off because I've just recently done the panel. Um, what we'll do is we'll turn those back on in a minute. And I'll show you what the difference with those. Uh, tell me if the flex is too long and alert me if they're too sharp and I can set the minimum radiuses if I want to. Distances and angles for the tolerances you can set. Any slopes, if you had slopes in your system, you could set those. And whether you want to auto connect the track, I like to do that because it snaps it in place quite Quite nicely and whether you want to allow mixed rails um, I'm going to turn that off for now because I just want to work in code 55 and then whether I want to snap to grid as well so I'll leave that one on I'll come back to these uh, sizes in a moment so if we go to the um, home uh, button here you've got the ability to cut copy and paste if you're working with layers then you can set multiple layers uh, I'm only working with one so we won't worry about that whether you want to see your track as a center line track and sleepers let's just go and um, I'm going to turn on the track libraries that I want to there's a whole load in here for N Arnold Atlas Backman I'm working with Pico track and I'm going to be working with code 55 so that's the only track library that I want available to me my choice um, don't know quite why I've got scale electrics on uh, we'll probably want to turn that off at some point um, but let's just go ahead and we'll do a very very simple layout I'll drop um, a bit of flex track onto here and I'll drop another bit of flex track on and then we'll just grab and you see if I just hover this track this piece of track near to the flex track it snaps into place okay now I'm just going to add in a number of these and that one there and we'll just come around so that it joins Now, here's um, a little bit of a trick that I found. Um, if I want to put a point in here or I want to have some things at it, uh, angling up, then what you can do is you can just drop in your flex track, which will join. But what I did was to grab some straights. So we'll put a straight into there. We'll then have that turn out for no particular reason. And um, if I then put a the other side twist that round drop that into there now what I can do is just grab my flex track at the end of it which is quite difficult to do in here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the settings and the end point I'm going to make that 10 I'm going to make the connection 10 and I'm going to make the control point 10 and now you can see that I've got some uh, grab handles here so I can quickly Connect that up there, connect that up there, and we'll just connect that one and connect that one. Now, I don't particularly want this um, turn out there, so what we'll do is drag that across. And this piece of flex track, if I just grab the end, uh, we'll just have that come in. And, and you can see they've got a red mark here which shows that that kink is too much so what I can do is to use these grab handles just to smooth that out so that then looks like that is an acceptable curve so you can see how quickly and easy it is to move things around um, if I want to have some buildings or ceiling over here because it's all connected up I can move the whole thing around um, I can even put it at a slight angle if I wanted to and uh, Control-Z is always useful. Control-Z just undoes what, what you've done. And there's a whole load of track options here. You've got um, crossovers and uh, all sorts of points, and you've even got a turntable as well. But um, download and, and have a look.
if you uh, want to use something different. Now I use track. You can also have centre line, which will just give you the line, or you can show the sleepers. Uh, but I tend to work with track because I'm going to print this out at full size and then I can lay my track out and see how things actually look. Uh, you've also got the ability to put a uh, road bed down and tracing if you want to, hidden track and visible track and a whole load of other different options here as well for, for your limits. Let's just go to the um, insert. I can add a line or a surface so just um, turn it on and um, you can just add a line if you want to into here and then just bring that line down turn it around I can pretty much do whatever I want with that line I don't tend to use lines too much um, but you've got those there if you want them you can add a rectangle in the same way it does help if you turn the button on so uh, drag Grab a rectangle and then you can just move the points out if you want to, or you could just move the whole whole of the um, the side of it. There we go. Just grab that over and move it around. I've got snap to grid on, so it's snapping around all over the place. So if we just take off the snap to grid, now I can just drop it wherever I want to quite easily and just resize this out so this might be uh, you know a station or it could be a, a platform like i said I, I tend not to use those i prefer to get the measurements of the actual models the builders i'm working with and just work with bits of paper um, rather than those but but those um, you've got the ability to add lines and rectangles if you want to you've got adding circles as well you can also add in a ruler there we go so it gives you like your little scale and you can change the uh, the information for the ruler if you want to as well and you can also add in text as well so I'll just have this down as Finnick key uh, you might want to have something that um, refers to uh, you know where something's going to be or, or just a reminder for something in the future uh, track libraries we had a look at and then you've got your object libraries so you've got uh, Picasso there um, Weissman different options it just turns them on so this is the Weissman end signals you could have those turn them off if you don't want them um, general scenery let's just bring this in put that there make it a bit bigger so you know you could just here I'm going to have a whole load of trees um, those I want to have some multiple trees here I want to have some bushes you just drop them around and you can add in whatever you want like I said I only tend to use these for track um, I'll then print it out and just draw on the scenery if I want to later on but it's all there if you want it and you've also got compasses if you really want to have compasses you've got compass roses so you could put a yeah, just let people know which way north is if you want to and then you've got user objects these are all the, the objects that come with the software which is rather nice and if I go into ratio because I'm going to be working with quite a few ratio models then just click and drag that into there uh, if I want to have a narrow ramp click on it and then if you get the end of it click in on it grab the end and put the platform ramp where you want it uh, if you want to have wide platform ramps etc and uh, if I close out of there I'm going to use user objects and I look at Backman for instance I'll bring that over so I'm working on quite a small screen here so it's uh, it's quite difficult um, normally you would make it a lot bigger makes it a lot more manageable come on don't snap up there and in here we've now got um, four engine road shed washing plant portable offices art deco station building a whole load of things so if I want to have the Oak Hill Brewery factory unit click and drag that on um, if I want to have the Oak Hill Brewery warehouse again drop that on and then just simply drag them around to wherever you want them on your layout 
and you can start to build up the scenery for your layout. Like I said, I tend not to do that very much, um, but all of these uh, different options are in the software for you. So you've got all of the user objects. Like I said, it's very, very easy for changing the track around, particularly if you're working with flex track. So if, for instance, I want to take this up on around these buildings, simply grab it, move it around, use the little arrows, Okay, I've introduced some tight corners there, but you get the idea of how you can very quickly and easily change your track plans. And I found this to be very, very useful while I was putting my layout together. Um, when I do the video for the baseboard, I'll have a, the printout. You'll be able to see how it all fits together. Anyway, hope this has been useful. I'll add a URL in the final video when I upload it and uh, watch out for another video from me coming soon. Thanks so much for your time. Bye bye.